Jones. Yes, sir. Jones, I'm sorry. <laughs> Lucia, you're still under oath. Yes, sir. On one road, but we need to be on another road, you know what I'm saying? And just to get this all cleared up. So it's important we have these discussions. So you drive to East Point, you pick her up, she's texting you, we're going to smoke some weed. You told me that night she, I saw a message on there, she said Happy New Year to you, right? Mm -hmm. That was the text, next thing you know. So walk me through it. 10 o'clock, you did what? You drove, you left the house and went where? Uh, to Gazara. Oh, they said 10 o'clock. Okay, 10 o'clock, no. Um, our girlfriend, she goes to work at like, plus we work at 10.30, o'clock at 10.30. So right. we were at her job at about 10.30 when she okay. went inside. After that, um... So what is it? Where does she work? At Dakota. At and Dakota, like Plastics Industries or something? And that's true. That's in uh, Oak Park or Hazel Park. Madison Heights? No. Um, it's, in, it's like going through Farndale. Yep. Or Lewis and everything like that. Yep. It's Dakota. And it's basically by the Amazon over there. Okay. Yeah, and then the other house in that is Dakota. Okay. So you now you leave your house at when? What time? At about 9.59 exactly is when we had left the house. About 9.59 exactly? Yeah. Okay. So you leave and you're with you. Who, who's with you? My girlfriend and my kids. Okay. And then you drive where? To my job. Okay. Now, does uh, your girlfriend know that you're talking with Zion, Zion and Zion? Oh, she knows. We, 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 we talk and everything and hang out and everything. Does she know that night? No. So she has no idea. So you just, so you take your girlfriend, uh, okay. fiance Katrina? Yes. So you take her to work? Mm -hmm. So you leave at 959 exactly? Get to her job around like 1027, basically getting close to 1030. Okay. Talk for or a minute, she got out, and then I left. Are you texting or in any communication with Zion while you're taking her to work to drop her off? Um, no, I don't really text her. Either, so. Okay. Yeah. So you have so the next so after she gets out of the car, then you start texting Zion, right? Oh uh, no, I was on the way home. Yep. And down her Zion was talking about hanging out to me and she didn't see me. Oh no, no, do this anything. Okay. So I text her. I was like, do you still want to hang out with her? And she's like, yeah. And she asked me to pick her up. I think for her. Okay. So she's like, come by, pick me up. You're like, yeah, sure, I'll be right over there. So then you take a detour and go pick her up? Yeah. Do you stop anywhere? No. Okay. So you pick her up, and that's the video that leads us into the video that we saw that someone sent us. Correct? Yes. Um, was anybody else? Yeah. Was anybody else at the home at her house? I don't know. So you just pick her up and go to the door when she gets in. Let me call you back, this is Attorney Jones. Um, so you pull the door when she gets in, right? And then you guys take off. Yeah. What? Okay, so uh, did she leave anything or forget anything? Like when you pulled out of the driveway and stopped the street or anything? Was there something that was going on? No. Nothing at that point? No. Uh -huh. Okay. Because you stopped in front of the house as you were departing? Yeah. Oh, uh, for she a couple didn't, minutes. She didn't want to walk over there. Like she came on her house? Yeah. I was parked like in front of like, the trash can or whatever, like yeah. where there was snow. Yeah. And she didn't want to walk through the snow. So I backed up a little bit and we left. Okay, so that's why you just sat in the street for like two minutes? Yeah. Okay. Um, so you pick her up, and then you head straight to where? Stay home. So you guys can stop anywhere, nothing like that? No. no. Um, you, you didn't buy any marijuana or anything on the way, nothing Not like that? No. You already had your own weed, she had her own weed? Yes. Yeah? Okay. So then that's when you get back, you put the kids to bed? Is yep. that what you're saying? Yep, took them upstairs, I put them in the bed. Okay. And then watched PJ Masks for like 20 minutes. Who? PJ Masks is a TV show that my kids have to watch. <laughs> <laughs> a card oh, okay. Okay, so you watch cartoons with the kids? Yes. Yeah. Where's she at? Where's I at? So she's downstairs, you're upstairs, yeah. in the bedroom with the kids watching cartoons and stuff, right? Yeah, they'll calm down and toys put away and put okay. down in the bed. How old are the kids? Two and uh, one and two. Okay. So you start, um, are you texting Katrina still at this point? Or uh, you my phone is still in the I was prioritizing the kids, putting it under the bed. They usually go to sleep at like 10, but they're with me. And with their mom at night, so they're still a little late. Okay. So you're not, you, you had to charge your phone? I, I, I no, it's not a phone in my pocket. Okay, so you're not texting Katrina anymore? No. Okay, while she's there? Oh, uh, I texted Katrina that I was home and everything. Okay. Yeah, with the kids there. After that, there was no okay. conversation. When you got home, you just texted her, hey, I'm back home, is that? Does she know at that point that Zion's over? Oh, no, she didn't text me back or anything. Okay, but you didn't text her and let her know that she's there either, no. right? Okay, 
So you guys start, you come back downstairs, you're just smoking, you guys split up your weed? We basically just put it all together. Who rolled the weed? I did. Oh. Yeah. So you just smoke it, and then you guys are just chilling, watching TV, talking, hanging out? Yeah. Did she come on to you or anything like that? Did she come on to her at all? No, not that at all. Okay. At this point here, we're talking, let's see, time frame, you're back at the house at what time? Between, like, 11 or 11.15 or 11.30. Okay. So now it's like 11.15 or whatever. Um, Now we're at 11.30 because you're upstairs watching PJ Maxx. Um, You guys mix up your weed, you roll up, you guys start smoking, you're just watching TV, just chilling? Yeah. She's telling me about um, how her mom, their relationship's a lot better than what the last time she talked to us. And about her boyfriend, about prom, the, um, the job and everything, and how she's working on getting an apartment and everything. So, is she, do you notice her on her phone with anybody, FaceTime or anything? She was texting somebody. Just texting? Uh, somebody, she did get a FaceTime. Okay. I don't know if she answered or not, because I really think that I'm just watching TV. And okay. All right. So, now, you guys are just chilling, and that's all of a sudden she just blanks out like that? Um, not, I mean, I got up to go give me something to drink. Yeah. I came back and she was saying she was tired and everything and she laid her head back. So I can let you go to sleep for a bit, whatever. Okay. And then about 15 to 20 minutes after that, I was like, okay, are you good? You ready to go home? And she wasn't responding or any of that. Was her plan to go back home that night? She said she had work in the morning. Okay. Uh-huh. Now, you're still not texting Katrina, right? No. Because at that point, I'm freaking out like, oh, shit, did she, did she just die or something? Well, I mean, you just said you, you went to get a drink and her head's back on the couch. If she's still alive at that point, he's probably just high or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. from, you know, weed. But, um, so you shake her, grab her by the arms, you said earlier, right? Shake her, there's no activity, no, no, like that. You say she's got a faint pulse, right? Mm-hmm. So now we're looking at the time frame, is what time is it at this point? Like we talked like an hour later? Um, around that time where that, all that happens is when she was, we were basically getting ready for her to go home. Okay. So that would be within that hour and a half towards the end of that. Okay, so we're looking probably close to 1 o'clock, right? Let's say probably 1 o'clock. 12 or 1, yes. Okay, I mean, 12 or 1, there's an hour, but... So you just got back to the house, watch PJ Maxx, so I'm assuming it's not 12? Right, yeah, definitely, so it would be close to 1. Okay, so at that point, she's just really stoned and ready to take a nap, it appears. That's something. And then you start shaking her. She doesn't wake up. You check her pulse, you said, mm-hmm. and you can see she's not breathing, not like that. So at that point, what are you doing? Freaking out. Okay, so you're freaking out, and this whole time you've been home. Because at that point in time, we thought she was definitely dead. Yeah. Okay. Well, was she dead? Do you think she was dead at that point, or does she still just have faint breathing? And it wasn't anything. There was nothing at that point. Yeah, exactly. Okay. You know the difference between dead and alive, right? <laughs> was she not dead? Breathing. She wasn't breathing. So I assumed that but then her heartbeat was like, couldn't read our heartbeat, couldn't feel our heartbeat or anything. So I would say she was dead, definitely. Okay. Now this whole time that Zion's there, you don't text Katrina? No, she isn't texting. Is, is, is Zion texting anybody or calling anybody? She was definitely texting somebody. I, I know she had got to FaceTime somebody. Okay, but that was earlier. Yeah. Like now they're because you're asking when that was happening. Yeah, so at yeah, this point, like, you're with another girl. Mm-hmm. And your girl's at work. Mm-hmm. You stop texting her when you get back to the house with Zion. And you don't text. When do you text Katrina again? Um, when do you talk to her again? Around like 2. Because she was feeling sick and she told me that she needed me to pick her up. Okay. So that whole time, she doesn't talk to anybody. Now is, can you see Zion on her phone? Is she talking to any, texting anybody at all or even on her phone? No. So that whole time, she's not texting anybody either. Except for, you said, when she first got there, though. Yeah, when she first got there, when she found the couch. Okay, so we're at 12 o'clock, though. She's not FaceTiming anybody or talking to anybody? Not that I can recall. Okay. So up until that time, you think now she's dead. You have not talked to your girlfriend, and Zion hasn't talked to anybody. You take her, you freak out, and you take her, you throw a body in the trunk, right? Yes. How do you do that? Uh, like what do you do? Like is your is your car already set or? or no, I parked in the driveway. I I pulled in, and okay. so I was sitting outside. Okay, well, so I went outside and I backed my car up because the truck would have to come this way, like into the driveway. Okay. And 
then I put her into the trunk, and then that's when I took her to Highland Park. So you backed up in your driveway, mm -hmm. and you just hit the trunk? Yes. Okay. And then did you bring out the front door? The back door. So you brought her around the backyard and threw her in the trunk? Yes. Okay. What side was your head on? Um, to my left. Okay. And then you, so from basically until that FaceTime, just after you got the house at like 11.30 or something, mm -hmm. she never got on her phone again. You never seen her phone again? No. Okay. Um, so she, she must have just tucked it away somewhere, right? So when you came downstairs, is that when she got off the phone? Um, no, when I first, when she first was like on the phone and I didn't know she'd get a FaceTime call, it was yep. way earlier in her coming over. Okay. Yeah. Did she want anybody to know that she was there? I don't think she cared. Yeah. She, she didn't care that people knew that she was over there? Yeah. Okay. Um, so that was it. So the FaceTime ends, whatever, her phone's gone, disappeared, you never see it again the rest of the way? Literally. Okay. Um, and you have no idea if it was on or not, you think it's on her though? Yes. So when you get back home, the phone's not there, right? No. There's no cell phones there? No, just my phone. Do you have any other cell phones in the house? Only other cell phone that was in the living room is my girlfriend's old iPhone, which sure. broke from our argument. It was when you guys were arguing? Yeah. Is that when the cable broke? Yes. What were you guys arguing about? <laughs> um, She was feeling as though I wasn't taking her side because her manager told her that what she was wearing was showing too much of her stomach. Yeah. And I was like, okay, well... I understand she did magic irritating you, but she did tell me what the dress code was. So she came home, and this was funny she was pregnant, so it makes more sense now on why <coughs> that whole thing happened. But she came home, I was just like, babe, so what did you wear your first week there, and what are you wearing now? My point is, like, you, you got too comfortable, so you're wearing different clothing compared to what you're supposed to be wearing. And she, the bagel she was eating, she was eating, she smacked you with the bagel, and I don't throw her phone at the table, which broke her phone and shattered her on the damn table. Okay, and this was, when did this happen? Did you your bagel or something? She smacked me with the bagel. Oh, that's bad. I hate getting hit with bagel. Yeah. <laughs> what, when did this happen? When was this? This would have been... You said a couple months ago, then you said January. This was before New Year's, so at least like two weeks before New Year's. So two weeks before... I don't know the exact date, but I told my mom about it. Cause so I two weeks it. before Christmas? Yeah. Then, okay. Yes, before Christmas. Because okay. yeah, it's Christmas and New Year's is coming. Yeah. Okay. So she was at the factory though, right? Yes. I mean... Well, what's the big deal with the dress code? So she didn't, she didn't like that? And yeah, she felt like I was not taking her side, so that's what she told me. Okay. So it. she threw the bag at you? She smacked me with the bag. She smacked you. What did you do back? I threw my phone, threw her phone, and we had a whole heated argument. She smacked me again, and I walked out the house. I called my mom. I called my brother. I was like, I don't know what to do, but all I told her, I was just trying to have a conversation. I didn't want to argue or anything. I was trying to. De escalate basically and she's gonna get angry this down the third. Yeah. But it turned into a whole argument. <laughs> so alright, so then you take off, so now you throw you back up in the driveway, mm -hmm. right? So you take off to Tyler Park. Yes. Um what time was that? Do you have any idea? No. Because you nine fifty nine you said you walked out of the house before, so no no time frame? No, nine fifty nine is when I left. My girlfriend take her to work. Okay. So, you, when you, after you dump her in Highland Park, you go, where, where do you go from there? I went, I went home. Did you stop anywhere? No. Did you talk to anybody? Not at all. Not at all. Okay, so when you got home, did you talk to anybody? Oh, uh, I got home, I was talking to Katrina. She's asking about, I believe she asked me about the babies or like what the boys were doing. She said she was feeling sick. She's, this, we were finding out, well, this is before we knew she was pregnant. She was feeling nauseous and everything. And she's like, I need to come home. Okay. Come pick me up. So have that, and now it's around two something. Uh, you picked her up at, or what time did you? I left the house at least at like one fifty something, I would say, or close to. I just know she texted me to come get her. Yep. At like two something, or getting okay. close to. Something. Okay, so two so so you went to Highland Park, threw the body, and you're back home, right? You don't stop anywhere, you don't talk to anybody yeah. until you get back home. So you're home. You think it's at what time? Let's do like one something maybe. Okay, so um, after you get home is when you have contact again with somebody in Katrina. I don't have to with anybody else to talk to Katrina. Okay, so that, yeah. Okay, so because you, you talk to her a lot, I'm assuming, right? Yeah. Okay, so, but you stopped talking to her for those few hours that Zion was at your house. Yeah, she doesn't text or do anything when she's at work. Did uh, Katrina, did you tell Katrina that Zion was there? 
Oh, no, because I just dumped her body. So that conversation would have been wild, and I didn't want to get her involved in anything. Okay, so that night you never told her, you just went about your night as just a drunk man business? Yeah. Okay. Were you... I'm, I'm sure at this point you had to talk about it with her, correct? No, I don't want to tell her anything. Okay, so you still at this point haven't told her, like, hey, his uh, iron was over or nothing like that? Didn't tell no, her, so I, you engaged me and I told her it was better to tell her what's going on. I she remember that. Know. Yeah, she didn't know until... Um, so when he came to me, I can tell you that for a fact. He came to me, I said, have you told anyone this? I said, you know, your girl's going to find out and you got hell to pay. I remember that. Yeah, and that's what so she... She didn't know, she wouldn't have known anything till when? Um, Probably that Saturday we, evening? When we came back the next, because during the whole thing, um, there, there well, was, there's something I have to tell you there, and I do have to tell you this. What night was that? That would have been the night of the Rams? Yeah. They so were, they were staying up in Waterford. That's my brother. And then, and that was, everything was good because they came and got his car. Monday night. And what? Uh, Rams, well, the Rams played Monday night. Right. Yeah. But they came and got his car. Towards the weekend. Was that Sunday? Friday. Or was that? That was like early Friday. Or no, that, that, was that was Saturday. Saturday. That, that was a Sunday. Okay, so early Sunday. That was Sunday. Well, whatever the day it was, he received a threat. And <coughs> excuse me. He received a threat, and they received a subsequent threat. And. I told him, I said, listen, you can't go back to that location because somehow they found out he was staying in Waterford. I said, if worse comes to worse, you come to me. So I received a knock on the door. What time was that? At, at this point, I don't know. There was so much going on that day. But it was very been like in the maybe 10 or something in the morning, 10 at night yeah. or something like that. Yeah. Him and his whole family came. Yeah. And I said, yeah. well, now, you know, I ain't getting involved with your shit, okay? So he stayed at my house, and I divulged that to, I think, Miss Logan, or, you know, I told her, because he was, they were receiving death threats from um, the Milton side of the family, which created a, a whole nother issue. Yep. <clears throat> because it turns out I represent one of the Miltons, but not anyone... <coughs> I mean, the, she might be like the second cousin of, could, uh, what's the mother's name, Sierra Milton? So I represent a Marquita Milton and a Shakita Milton. Okay. And we, I didn't know that there was any kind of relationship until I found out his mom's maiden name. So so that I never knew there was any Milton anything because the girl's name is Zion Foster. Okay. So I didn't know there was any kind of potential conflict, but then the conflict's been resolved. Okay, okay. So but Monday night, you so Monday night, the night of the Rams, he came to your house. Came to my house. Right. So does Katrina house. know now? Yes. Okay, so you told her, and she had no idea at the time. Because I told him he couldn't, he couldn't right. stay if she doesn't know what's going on. She really needs to know what's going on. So was she shocked by Zion being there? No. She she hasn't she hasn't been there, right? Yeah. And, and, and well, I mean, would she you know the whole story? Is what she, she was shocked. Well, by well I'm sure she's probably pissed. Yeah, yeah, going you know, no matter what, you're, you're this is a yeah. deal. But so she doesn't know that night. But you normally talk to her like how many? How, how often do you text Katrina? If you're not with her, like several times an hour, I like ten there. times an hour, twenty times an hour. The whole day, basically. The whole day you're texting, right? No, the whole day we're together. Yeah. We're really on the phone. But if you're apart, you guys are you're texting, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Like uh, like more than three times an hour. You you think? No, very like much. If she's at work, she really does not be on the phone. Okay. So we don't, we just don't talk. Unless right. there's something happening. Like she so she's home working hours, then your text messaging is not as frequent. Yeah. Would she be pissed if you, if you picked up from work and said, hey, Zion was just here for the last three hours? No. No, she'd be okay with yeah, that? Yeah, she's completely cool. She knows Zion, okay. she likes Zion, everything. Okay. Um, but she hasn't been to your house since May, right? Yeah. Okay. And they're, they're all good. Yeah. Right? So there's no reason why you'd hide that from, at from all. her? At all. Okay. But well, Zion would just openly just be like, hey, I'm over at Jalen's house. We're just smoking weed. Yeah. Was everybody fine with that? Well, yeah. I smoked her mom and she smoked and that was that. Right. But she had a boyfriend, right? Yeah. Okay. How was he about him? I have no idea. He did not speak. I don't know that man. Okay. Never seen him or anything. So he's, so you never had an issue with him and Zion? 
there was no issue. There's no jealousy between Katrina or whoever her boyfriend is. Nothing like that. That was never an issue. There was never an argument about it? Not at all. Nothing. So you never told a family member or nothing that you guys were arguing about that night or anything like that? No. Okay. Here's what I want to do. I want to have you show us the dumpster. Okay. Because I don't want to mistake it, and I want to obviously get out there and see if she's still there, then we need to recover her, and if not, then we need to do the steps to locate where she's at. Okay. Okay? You're okay with that? Absolutely. All right, so let me get that set up, and then... You want to do that tonight? Yeah, we're going to do that. Let's get going. Also, a DNA, a bumper swab. Are you okay with that? I'm fine. A bumper swab? Okay. Whatever. Okay. So we've got to go fill that out, and then we'll bring that back. Is it a buckle swab? It's called a... No, no, no. It's called a buckle. No, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, we're not doing that. But, yeah, it's a buckle swab. Stop the video briefly, 53 minutes and 50 seconds in. Sergeant Jones, there was some discussion about a buckle swab. Yes. What's a buckle swab? It's like a long Q-tip that we use to collect saliva from somebody to collect their DNA. Okay, and that's just to preserve a DNA sample for potential analysis in the future? Yes, to compare to any evidence that might be recovered. Okay. I'm going to skip ahead 53 minutes and 50 seconds to 55 minutes and 48 seconds. So let me run this past you. Are you going to go, too? I will go. Might as well. If I need to squeeze me in the back seat of the car. Well, no, no, no. I'm just making suggestions. The options are I can write out the statement. You're here. I'm not going to have him sign anything until he gets back anyhow. You can review it. They can take him with the camera to go identify what dumpster and then bring him back. Or you can ride with him. You tell me what you're going to do. I think I'd probably ride with him. That horse is there. Okay. 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 Stop the video at 56 minutes and 27 seconds. And then skip ahead. To 58 minutes and 27 seconds. Sir, are you the same Jones? Is my last name Jones? Yes. Sir, are we related? No. How do you know? Because my true name is Jones by marriage. Oh, really? Yes. Question. You have cameras on your house? Yes. What company? It says Vivient. Vivient? Yeah. And did you already delete what was on there? I didn't touch the cameras at all. Well, how does it record? It records motion. At what point? Let's say it's going to the doorbell and the camera would flick on. Okay, so what about when you're pulling into the driveway? I'm not sure. Probably would, yes. If I pull the driveway, say any kind of motion that it picks up on that front little thing, it'll ping on it. Okay, and you have an account for that? No, it was pre-installed when we moved into the duplex. So is that, are you renting there? Yes. So does that homeowner or whoever owns that house, they have the access to that camera? Yeah. Okay, and then who is that? Her name is Pamela. Pamela? No, no, that's her dad, doctor. My girlfriend knows, and my mom has the lease and everything. It has the landlord's name and everything on it. Okay, and the cameras, how many cameras are there? There's one and two. There's one, the doorbell camera, and there's one on the side of the house that looks like... So the doorbell and then the side of the driveway? Yes. Did you need that? No, I didn't need it. I didn't need it. I just didn't. I got to ask you something that I thought was pretty cool. So, do you have OnlyFans? No. What's that? OnlyFans. What's that? It's where they meet. It's an adult porn site. So if I wanted to make porn and sell my porn, you could... Like Pornhub? I guess. Okay. 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 Okay.
No, you make your own, and you sell it. You go do it live, and people pay to see it live. Well, I'm not. That's what I had to figure out what it was. So when we did some reports that it was, and I got to clarify it because you had a few laptops at your house. I have one laptop. Well, my girlfriend went to choose for school, and I have a red one that I wanted to touch, and she used that for school as well. Okay, there's a tablet or something, too, but it came up. So there's some tips and stuff like that. You were doing only fans page or something? Never. So you have not participated, made, or tried to sell any family sex videos, nothing like that? Not at all. Okay, there's going to be nothing like that on the computers or anything? No. Okay. Yeah, I'm just telling you right now, because just so you know, when you delete something, it's really not deleted. I told him that. Okay, yeah, because, I mean, that's why, like I said, I'm trying to build a relationship here. He's prepared to give you his phones. I told him that there's silk rights, silk hawk, all of that. I told him that. Silk rights, silk hawk. Yeah, silk rights. Silk rights. I told him all of that. I said, turn those things over. Yeah. Because I'm actually helping. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.
Yeah, I guess maybe a couple of streets or... So my question is, what brought you to that spot? Just, oh, that was really kind of just spontaneous. I didn't want to put her anywhere that was like down the street from my house or anything, you know? Okay. So you went over there, that's the other familiar area that you're... Because you used to work somewhere close? Yes. At Magna? Yes. And then your cell phone... The FBI, they came in with that. They asked for that when they took my car. How long have you had that phone? That actual phone, not the phone number. Probably about a couple months. Okay. Did you delete stuff off the phone? No. You didn't delete contacts, erase anything? If you did, I get everything has been leading up to you trying to conceal something, right? Uh-huh. So that's why I'm asking you, was there anything deleted off there? Because the phone records are not going to be deleted, right? We're still going to get those and it's going to show all that. So if I opened up, if they opened up your phone, it would have messages going back all the way since you've owned that phone? Yeah. Nothing's been removed or deleted? The only thing that's been deleted was the boyfriend. The boyfriend, because he texted me. The who? The boyfriend texted me. Okay. How did he have your number? I blocked him. Okay. What's his name? Vertez. Okay. Who? Vertez. Okay. Okay. That's really, yeah, that's it. So what is her name stored as in your phone? Zion? Yeah. It was simply Zion. Zion? Yeah. And then do you have like a Gmail account or anything attached to that? Yes. You do? Yes. Do you have your Gmail account, like the locations and all that, you have your access to that? You mean like... Like what's your username for Gmail? It's just my email, Jaylen Omar. J? Yeah, Jaylen Omar. J-A-Y-L-I-N-O-M-A-R? Yes. At Gmail.com? 15 at Gmail.com. 15? Yes, at Gmail.com. So what I'm asking that is that would also like help show where you went. So if we were to look into the Google, it might be able to show us that. Okay. Do you know what the password is to that? It's Brazier 14. What is it? B-R-A-Z-I-E-R 14. That's the password to your Gmail? Yes. Is Zion's number still on your phone? Or did you delete her? It's still there. It's still there? Yes. Okay. Did you delete any pictures or anything off your phone or anything like that? No. The phone's, like, I didn't really take a lot of pictures of that yet. Yeah. It's like, just like my cat, you know, my kids and stuff, so all that's still in my gallery. Okay, so you never reset the phone like that, right? And not also deleted? No. Just like it was two months ago? Okay. Yeah. Was she ever in the basement at that house? No. So nothing that was swabbed in the basement would show any of her DNA or anything like that? In the living room the whole time. And then, well, what about any other times where she ever never made, she's never been, so her stuff, there should be absolutely nothing, no fingerprints, nothing of hers in the basement. At all. The only place that she was was on the main floor. Yes. What about upstairs? No. She I never went upstairs. She didn't want to see the kids. None of that. Did she bring any kids into the house? Uh, no, I carried both my wallets. Okay. Yeah. Just asking. Okay. Anything else? Could she have been in the, went down in the basement, like, when you weren't looking or anything? I don't know why she would have wanted to. I'm just, I'm just asking, like, if you're in the kitchen or doing something, could she have snuck down there or just went down there for something? No, I don't think so. You have an iCloud account? Oh, yes. What is that? Uh, Hurt Locker, 88. H-U-R-T? Yep. O-C-K-E-R? Yep, yep, 88. 88? Is there a password? Yep, Frank 14. Kept it simple, huh? Yeah. 13 or 14? 14. Okay. Okay, I think they're getting the car ready um, to be able to take you guys over there. Okay. While you guys are off doing that, I'm going to write out our statement, what we've been talking about, and then you guys are going to review it and all that stuff. Okay? Okay. Um, we'll go see where they're at with that. Stop the video at one hour, ten minutes, and eight seconds. And resume at one hour, fifteen minutes, and eighteen seconds. This was the day that was going to be moonlight. Do you have access to those cameras? Oh, it's a.
There's a thing in the house. There's a thing in the house? Yes, the FBI said they disconnected it when they came in. So that's the only way you could access it was by the screen? Yes. What would you do? You just click it and you click recent and it will show you any activity that was recent. But as far as like admin access or whatever, we couldn't definitely touch any of that. Okay. So you couldn't get to it on your phone? No. No app? They have an app, but the app does not work. Okay. Do you have the password to the app or anything like that? It didn't need a password. It connected through like Wi-Fi or whatever signal they used to bounce around. Okay. Next question. When the dumpster, was there only one dumpster there or two? There's two. There's two? Yes, two of them. Was there anything in it, did you notice? I have no idea. I didn't look. And is there a side door or you had to push her over the top? Over the top. And then it had the lids that come down? Yes. Were the lids already open or you had to open them up? They're open. And then did you put anything on top of her? No. So you just threw the body in there? That was it. That's it. Okay. She was definitely dead at that point. Was that a question? Oh, yeah. Yeah. My understanding of dead bodies that we should be dead. Was she heavy? Yeah. It's like most people are pretty heavy. Yeah. I'm not heavy. Um, no. I'm not heavy either. I'm just portly. So at this point, uh, we had members that assisted that took him and his attorney out uh, to be taken to the area that he was describing to them where the dumpster was. And, and did, you, I, did you accompany them on that um, excursion? No, sir. And um, while they were out there, what did, um, what did you do? So I prepared a written statement and typed out the different things that we had discussed. And then that statement was provided back to Mr. Brazier and his attorney, and we reviewed that together. Okay. Um, before we get to that written statement, um, just briefly, I'm holding what's been um, marked as uh, Proposed Exhibit 42, a, a transcript. Um, have you reviewed this? Yes. And um, does this transcript um, fairly and accurately uh, capture the, the statement, the recorded statement that we just reviewed um, in terms of uh, Exhibit 39? Yes, sir. Um, Your Honor, I move for the admission of Exhibit 39. <coughs> transcript of the interrogation. Any objection? Uh, Your Honor, hold on one second. And if I could just add one, I, I guess one point of clarification that um, there's a redaction in the transcript, is that correct, for that same area that was discussed about something that's inadmissible? Yes, sir. Okay. But other than that, it's a fair and accurate depiction of the, the statement that you took with the defendant on January 9th. Yes. No objection. And um, may I publish just one thing briefly, Your Honor? Sure. Um, I want to just bring up uh, page uh, 29 of the transcript. Um, at the top, there was a, a question that you asked about um, when the defendant purchased the marijuana that he had that night. Do you remember that? Yes. And um, there was an answer that he provided that in included some description of seizures that he had. Do you remember that? Yes. Um, did he ever say anything about Zion having a seizure the night that he threw her body away? No. Um, did he ever say anything about getting scratched by a cat that night? No. And I'm also holding what's been marked as uh, proposed exhibit 41. May I approach, Your Honor? Yes. Um, you mentioned a, a written statement that you ultimately compiled based on the the interview that you conducted. Is, is proposed exhibit 41 a copy of that statement? Yes, sir. And um, was that something that uh, the defendant and um, attorney Gary Jones had the opportunity to review with you. Yes. And um, did the defendant do anything to uh, adopt that statement um, as his own in your, your presence? 
Yes, he signed it and dated it with the time. Okay, and that document that you're holding that's marked as proposed exhibit 41, um, is that a, a fair and accurate copy of the uh, original statement that the defendant signed in your presence back on January 19th of 2022? Yes, sir. Uh, your Honor, I would uh, ask to admit the proposed Missing. And what was the answer? Yes. And um, what was the next question uh, that was posed to the defendant? Can you tell me the last time you saw Zion? And uh, can you read the answer? The answer was, on January 4, 2022, I dropped my girlfriend off at work in Madison Heights around 10, and then I sent Zion a text asking if she wanted to smoke marijuana. She replied yes, and I told her that I would come and pick her up. I went and picked Zion up from her house in East Point. I picked her up in my 2005 Acura four-door sedan, off-white in color. The off-white would be the color. And we went directly to my house at 19451 Greenfield. I had my two sons in the car with me, Deshaun and Isaiah. We got to the house and I carried my sons upstairs and Zion stayed in the living room. I watched some PJ Masks with them till they went to sleep, then went down into the living room with Zion and we started smoking some marijuana. And what was the next question that was posed to the defendant? Who had the marijuana? And what was the answer? I had some and Zion had some. We mixed it together. And what was the next message that was posed to the defendant? Where did you get your marijuana from? And what was the answer? I buy it at Lives in Ferndale. I bought it a couple months ago. Zion had hers in a sandwich bag and it had some purple leaves, but I don't know where she got it from. And um, what was the next question that was posed? What happened next? And what was the answer? We smoked weed and she was there for a couple hours. It was time for her to go home, so I asked her if she was ready. She said she was tired, so I let her sleep a little bit and went into the kitchen to get something to drink. When I came back out, I saw Zion's head, Zion's head was tilted back on the couch and she wasn't responding when I was calling her name. I went over to her. She had very shallow breathing and a faint heartbeat. I shook her a couple times trying to wake her up, but she didn't respond. Okay, and you see that bottom <coughs> of the first page, is there a signature on that page? Yes. Mr. Bragers. Okay. And what's the next question that was posed um, starting toward the top of page two? The next question was, then what did you do? And what was the answer? I checked her again and she was barely breathing. I panicked and I thought it would look like I killed her. So I carried her out to the trunk of my car and drove to Highland Park where I found the trash can and put her in it. I then came back home. And what was the next question that was posed to the defendant? Did you take your kids with you when you left? What was the answer? No, I left them asleep at the house. And what was the next question? What time was this at? And the answer? It was a couple hours after she was over. I don't know the time. And what was the next question? Did you call anyone after? And what was the answer? No, my girlfriend Katrina texted me around 2 saying she was sick and I went and picked her up. I never told her that Zion had been over because I had just thrown her in the trash and I didn't want to involve her. And what was the next question? Why didn't you call for an ambulance for Zion? And what was the answer? I was scared and thought it looked like I killed her. And what was the next question? How do you know if Zion was dead before you put her in the trunk? And what was the answer? She was not moving. I put my hand under her nose and she had no breath. I put my hand on her neck and she had no pulse. She was definitely dead. And um, what was the... Uh the reason behind the she was definitely dead part being um, handwritten instead of typed? Yep, so that was uh, at the request of Mr. Jones and Mr. Brazier to add that at the end of that sentence. So I added that and then I had Mr. Brazier initial it. That would be the letters at the end of that sentence. Okay.
And what was the uh, next question? Des describe the trash can that you put Zion in. And the answer? It was green, larger one with the large lids on top. They were already open. And what was the next question? Like the trash cans for a house or for a business? And the answer? The larger one like for a business. And what was the next question? Did you wrap her in anything before you put her in the trunk? And the answer? No. And the next question? Did you cover her with anything after throwing her into the trash? And the answer? No. <coughs> and the next question? Where is the area in Highland Park? The answer? I drove down Davison to Woodward, and there is a Little Caesars near there, and there were two green trash bins, the large ones. I threw her inside the trash can by the alley and left. And what was the next question? Have you and Zion ever been in a relationship? And the answer? No. And the next question? Did you guys have an argument? And the answer? No. The next question? I am providing you with a map of the area. Can you draw on it where you went? And the answer? Yes. And would that be the same map that was uh, previously admitted that we discussed yesterday? Yes. Um, and the next question? Would you be able to point out the location if you were taken there? And the answer? Yes. And the next question? Did Zion have a phone? And the answer? Yes. She has a phone and was texting, and I think she talked to someone on video while she was there. What was the next question? What did you do with her phone? And the answer? I didn't take her phone. She puts it in her pocket or in her bra area. It must have been with her when I put her in the trash. And the next question? Do you still have any of the marijuana that you guys smoked that night? And the answer? If I do, it would be in an orange jar under the TV in the living room. And the next question? Is there anything else you would like to add? No. Sergeant, I am um, holding a uh, handful of uh, discs. Um, one is marked as Proposed Exhibit 48, labeled DDC calls. One is marked as Proposed Exhibit 52, labeled Macomb County Jail calls. One is marked as Proposed Exhibit 62, labeled Wayne County Jail Calls, and one is marked as Proposed Exhibit 83, labeled MDOC Calls. Um, are you familiar with these four discs? Yes, sir. And do each of these four discs contain some audio recordings on them? Yes. And um, did you review those um, particular audio recordings on the discs? Yes. Um, now, is there a, a voice um, on in the recordings on those discs that you um, have some familiarity with? Yes. And what's the basis of your familiarity with that voice? Uh, the voice is that of Mr. Brazier's. And is your familiarity based on your discussion that you had with him back in January 19th of 2022? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, your Honor, I don't have any further questions for Sergeant Jones at this time. I do anticipate um, I'm going to plan to recall her tomorrow um, for another discreet part of the that I need to lay some further foundation for. Okay. Good morning, Sergeant. Good morning. Now, you were contacted by Mr. Brazier's then attorney, correct? Correct. Okay, and they were making arrangements for Mr. Brazier to come in and talk to, with you, correct? Correct. Okay. You didn't have to go pick up Mr. Brazier or look for him, correct? Correct. Okay, and, and there wasn't a warrant out for him at that particular time. Would that be a fair statement? Yes. Okay. And you also heard from his attorney that he tried to contact multiple Wayne County prosecutors uh, prior to him coming in on that particular day, correct? I heard him say that, yes. Okay. And you were under understanding that he also tried to contact East Point Police, correct? That, that's what I'm told from okay. hearing from him. Okay. Yes. And, and you had a conversation with uh, the detective from East Point Police Department, correct? Correct. And you were able to confirm that uh, allegation, correct? Correct. Okay. Now, did you, per, um, I guess, author any search warrant affidavits? 
uh, throughout the entire case? Yes. I believe, I don't believe I authored any of the search warrants. I think they were all prepped by different members on the team that were assisting. Okay. I may be wrong, but there, there's multiple search warrants that were submitted, so. Okay. And you were, were, were you the officer in charge at that particular time on the video? So at a particular time in the video, there's a team of us. Okay. So I'm not necessarily the officer in charge at that point. Um, we do our investigation, and that that's when we'll determine who's going to be the officer in charge. Okay. Was there an officer in charge at that particular time? After the interview? Yes. Or, okay. And was that you? No. Okay. Do you know whether or not anybody went to look for this particular jar of marijuana, if you know? Yes. Okay. And do you know if that was found? No. You don't, you don't know if it's found or it wasn't found? It was not found. Okay. Now, you stated that when Mr. Brazier and his then attorney went to go show your fellow officers this particular location, you stayed back at the station and you uh, written up a statement? Yes. Okay. And so it'd be fair to say that Mr. Brazier and Mr. Jones was not there when you typed that particular statement up, correct? Correct. Okay, so it'd be fair to say that you weren't giving a narrative as you were typing that statement up to Mr. Brazier or Mr. Jones, correct? The narrative was established during the interview. Okay. My question is, as you were typing up that particular statement, you were not giving a narrative as you were typing it to Mr. Jones and or Mr. Brazier, correct? They were not there, correct. Okay. Uh, approximately how long did it take you to, to type up this particular statement? I believe it was finished right around the same time they were back. Okay. So approximately how long did it take? But I would have to look at the time when they left. It was less than, less than an hour. Less than an hour, okay. Now, what did you do in order to write this particular statement? Did you rely on your notes? Did you go back and play the video? What did you do? Uh, both. You did both? Correct. Okay. And where did you go view the video at? My desk. The desk? Oh, so you can just go to your desk and hit rewind of the footage that was being portrayed in this particular room, correct? Yes. Okay. So you were able to listen to the whole video within an hour in order for you to uh, recreate this statement? I didn't need to listen to the whole video again, so I had my notes, and if there was something that I was trying to rewind to hear what was said, then that would be a part where I would rewind to. Okay. And, and on your notes, did you put like, 15 minutes into this interview, he said this in order to give you a cue if you needed to rewind a particular video, how far back you needed to go? No. Okay, so you just had to guess on what you remember when he said a particular statement on how far to go back to to try to refresh your memory? I didn't need to refresh my memory to the point where I just finished talking to Mr. Brazier. Okay. So this was within minutes of having the end of our conversation, I didn't have to have time notes to know how far back to go. Okay. Um, and it'd be a fair statement that he repeatedly through this statement indicated that prior to him placing placing Miss Foster into the trunk that he didn't sense any breathing and or a heartbeat. That'd be a fair statement, correct? It changed. You said it changed? Correct. You would agree he repeatedly said that she was not breathing and or there was a faint heartbeat prior to him placing her in the trunk. Repeatedly stated that, correct? He re repeatedly stated about the faint heartbeat and the shallow breathing before placing her in the trunk. After those sentences, that's when he started to add that she was dead. So you would agree that he repeatedly stated that she was dead prior to placing her into the trunk, correct? After, yes. And you would agree that when you typed that statement up, you didn't indicate on that statement that what he told you about her being shallow or no breathing 
and no heartbeat prior to placing her in the trunk. You would agree that that's not reflected originally on the statement, correct? No, the original sentence is from what he said when he said that she had shallow breathing and a faint pulse. He panicked and took her and threw her in the trunk and then took her to the dumpster. Okay. It was several minutes after that that he dis discussed that now he believes she was dead. Okay, so the, the purpose of you writing that statement was to basically summarize the totality of your interview, correct? Yes. And you knew during that particular interview, he stated that he tested her for breathing and there was none and there was no heartbeat. He stated that at multiple times during that interview, correct? Yes. Okay. But you declined to put that particular information into the written statement, correct? Correct. In fact, his lawyer at that particular time had to inform you like, hey, you're missing out a particular important detail that he stated, correct? Yes. And you had to handwrite it and have him initial that particular statement, correct? Correct. Now, was this part of the interview videotaped where you presented this particular statement to Mr. Brazier to sign? Yes, it was in the same room. It was it, okay. Was it my question? My question is, was it videotaped? While they were reading the statement? Yes. And I made the correction? Yes. Yes. Okay. Was it? Okay. <clears throat> now, is there a particular reason why you felt to leave that particular important detail out, this particular written statement? I didn't purposely leave it out. My statement is a summary of the... Was it an accident? Did you accidentally no. leave it out? No. So if it wasn't purposeful or accidentally, what would you classify the fact that this particular important information was left out the statement? Was it an accident? What was it? Yeah. So my statement is from when I had the interview and the discussions that we had and what he had explained to me that he did. I type out the questions and then what his responses were. I also present that to him to review. So if there is any changes or anything that I missed that he wants to add, and he's also asked that at the very end of the statement, if he has anything further that he wants to add to the statement, which he declined, and that's why he has the opportunity in front of his lawyer as well to review anything that's been typed out. Okay. So you said it wasn't purposeful, but it wasn't an accident, but you do agree it was left out, correct? Correct. And were you in total control of this particular statement, or did you give it to somebody else to edit it, or that they could have took it out, or just no. to be clear? Okay. Did you ever go to the particular scene on Greenfield, his house? Yes. Okay. Did you ever request you personally, or if it was requested for any fingerprints or DNA to be checked upstairs or downstairs in the basement? Oh, Ms. Foster, I'm sorry. I know that uh, when I went out, I went out with the FBI team, and we were out there to do different testing with uh, Luminol looking for any bio biological evidence. Okay. And do you know what areas they were looking in the in this house for? Yes, we, we looked in the uh, living room and the couch where he had described that the incident took place. Okay. Um, and you posed the question, or the question was posed to Mr. Brazier whether or not Ms. Foster went upstairs or downstairs, correct? Correct. Okay. Did you physically ever check downstairs with the luminol or the alternative light source? I don't do any of the luminol. Did you see anybody from the FBI or from the evidence tech from the Detroit police or Michigan State Police ever check upstairs or downstairs in the basement? Uh, they did go upstairs and downstairs. I don't remember seeing any testing being done okay. in those areas, but we did go throughout the entire uh, house. Okay. And who was the o officer in charge at that particular time when you were at the house? So when I'm at the house, this, it's assigned to myself and to uh, Detective Gilliman, who's sitting there. Okay. So you had some authority at that particular location at that particular time, correct? Yes. Okay. Did you, so you didn't direct anybody to go upstairs to check with the luminol or the alternative light source 
or check in the basement, correct? Correct. Okay. Is there a particular reason why you didn't request this particular those particular areas to be checked? Usually when we are given a location of an area, we will look in that area that was um, the area of focus with the broken table. We saw that different things that had gone on. By the time we got there with the luminol, multiple people had already been in and out of this location. There was no question on whether she was there. Different things are processed depending on the different evidence that you're given. Okay, okay. Now, it may not be a question that she was there, but there was a question whether or not she went upstairs or downstairs, correct? Correct. And you didn't instruct your staff or fellow officers to verify whether or not that particular question actually took place, correct? Which question? Whether or not she went upstairs or downstairs in the house. Did I ask somebody to go verify whether she made it upstairs or downstairs? To process that particular area to see if there was evidence that she went upstairs or downstairs. No, those areas were not processed. Okay. No. Did you instruct anybody to process this table for DNA? Uh, we did look at the table, yes. Okay. I know you looked at the table. My question is whether or not you instructed anybody to process the table for DNA. So when we're at a scene and there's a... Yes or no? Um, well, I wouldn't be the authority to tell somebody, pick up that piece of glass. I'm not a luminol or expert on different items that should be tested okay. to gather evidence. But as, a, as an officer in charge, one of your duties is to instruct evidence techs on what particular evidence to gather, correct? Correct. Okay. What area? What, or, or what evidence to actually collect and bag it and then have it sent for processing. That's one of your duties, correct? Yes. Okay. And some of your duties are to swab certain objects for DNA, correct, for processing, correct? Correct. Some of your duties as an officer in charge is to instruct evidence techs to process certain evidence for fingerprints and send it off, correct? Correct. Okay. And on this particular day, at this particular location, you never told any of the evidence techs to process this particular table for DNA, correct? Not you, correct. So you're saying that you told the evidence techs to process this table for DNA, is what you're saying? So the FBI team that was out there, they were told the area of the living room they were advised where the table was, it was in the backyard, and these were all items that, through their expertise, they review, they look at, and then they... Sergeant, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. What I'm asking is, did you, I'm not talking about what the, uh, the FBI independently felt like doing. I'm talking about you as the officer in charge at this particular location, because you were the officer in charge at the time, correct? At that scene, yes. Okay, and you had the authority, correct? Yes. This was a state crime, correct? Correct. The FBI was there in a capacity to help, correct? Yes. They didn't have authority over you in this particular scene, correct? Correct. Okay. So it was your decision of what evidence is collected and processed, correct? Yes. So my question, my question, I'll go back to my original question. You did not instruct the evidence text or whoever was in there to help you to process this particular table for DNA, correct? Yes. I am not able to tell somebody if they look at they knew about the table and if they look at it and through their expertise and their way of processing I'm not going to tell them to just pick up a table and process it if there's no um, value to it okay. after they looked at it okay you're the officer in charge correct yeah and you work for the homicide task force correct yeah. you're a homicide detective correct sergeant Oh, sergeant. I'm, I'm sorry. You are a homicide sergeant, correct? Yes. Okay. And you went to many crime scenes before, correct? Yes. Okay. And you've had other opportunities where you may see something that somebody doesn't see themselves, and you say, hold on, I think that is important. Let's collect it, correct? Yes. And that's the reason why you're a sergeant, correct? Yes. That's the reason why you're not just a regular patrol officer who's taking off the scene, correct? <coughs> correct? Correct. Because the Detroit Police Department relies on your expertise, your knowledge, your experience to be able to go to a particular scene and think outside the box, think other than other people 
to determine what could be of evidentiary value, correct? Correct. So my question again is, at the particular scene, you asked the officer in charge, you asked a sergeant in the Detroit Police Homicide Department, you did not independently tell the evidence text to swab this particular table for DNA, correct? <clears throat> yes or no, Sergeant? It is not my position, and if you would let me finish to explain it so you understand. When a cadaver dog comes out to the scene, <clears throat> I do not tell the dog where to smell. The dog is given an area of what area that we believe something has happened. Sorry, um, this is an this unresponsive answer, I'm sorry. We're talking about the DNA from this table. Not, Correct. We'll get to the cadaver dog Correct. maybe in a little bit. Right. We're talking about specifically this table. You did not have this table tested for DNA. It's a simple yes or no answer, Sergeant. Okay. The table was presented to the team who is the expert at the DNA and if they checked it and did not recover anything or see anything that was brought to their from the luminol, then they would not have collected anything. Okay, but the, you would agree. I mean, you may not be an expert on luminol, but luminol can, can check for bodily fluids or blood, correct? That's your understanding that luminol checks for? It, it, it picks up on several things. Yes. Okay, but a DNA needs to, a DNA swab needs to be sent off to the Michigan State Police to be analyzed, correct? If something uh, is illuminated throughout by the luminol, yes. So what you're saying is at first the luminol would detect the DNA yes. and then you swap it, correct? Yes. Okay. But to be totally exhaustive, wouldn't it be prudent to sw if, if you brought this table back inside the house and you suspect that this table could have played a particular part in this particular incident, wouldn't it be prudent to Make sure you dot all your I's and cross your T's to swab this particular table for any DNA. Judge, I'm going to object on two bases. One, I believe this question has been asked and answered multiple times. Number two, this okay. entire issue of the scene processing is entirely outside of the scope of her direct examination, which is limited to the interrogation on January 19th. We already went over the scene yesterday. And as far as the cross, I mean, I have full scope on the cross. I don't have to just pinpoint my cross examination on what was asked on direct examination. That's not what Michigan Rule of Evidence 611 says. All right, I'll allow a couple more questions, but I think we can cover this okay. pretty thoroughly. Okay, thank you. Now, it'd be fair that you felt that Mr. Brazier's statement was credible on uh, where this body was at, correct? That'd be fair, correct? Yes. Okay. You didn't feel that he had lied about where this particular body was at, correct? Correct. Okay. Uh, just one second, Your Honor. Now, you didn't notice any scratches or on Mr. Brazier, did you? No. Did you have him take his clothes off and photograph his body to see whether or not he had any scratches on his body? No, I, I don't believe we did, but this was two over two weeks okay. after. But so you're saying that you didn't check his body, you didn't photograph his body to see if he had any scratches on his body, correct? No, I didn't. Okay. And your your partners didn't either, correct? I, I do not believe so. Okay.
Thank you. No further questions. Uh, just briefly, Your Honor. Um, Sergeant Jones, just to be clear, the the process of that state, that written statement, that's that's something that you compiled based on the recording that we all watched in court that's been admitted as Exhibit 39, correct? Yes, sir. And you gave, uh, did you give the defendant an opportunity to review that? Yes. And was that in the presence of his attorney? Yes. And he ultimately signed that statement? Yes. Were you trying to conceal or hide anything um, when you drafted that statement? No. Um, and just to be clear, in this interrogation that we saw, the defendant acknowledged that he threw Zion's body away, correct? Yes. He acknowledged that it looked like he killed her. Yes. Uh, he denied deleting substantially the, all the data off of his phone, with limited exceptions, correct? Correct. He denied ever going back to the area of the dumpster, correct? Correct. Thank you. Right. Did he recross? No. Right. Any questions from the jury? Please pass your question uh, to the deputy clerk. established or admitted that she was there, would there be any point to test the DNA? Uh, the DNA that we would have been looking for would have been any type of possible uh, blood or bodily fluids or semen. Okay. Any follow-up questions based on that? Um, yes, just one. When you're presented with like an entire house, um, in your experience, the entire house for DNA? No. Um, and I guess what's the process of trying to collect DNA samples from uh, an area as big as an entire house? Uh, so the process is the techs go through first and they look for anything that's obvious to the eye where you might already see something. Um, after that we do a second process where you can come in with uh, different luminol and those areas are usually tested where we believe that the scene had happened. Um, or if something was possibly cleaned up and something was trying to be concealed, that's where we go more meticulous in those areas to try to loom it all and see if anything um, can still be located. 